All right, this is gonna be fun. David here from Learn Stage Lighting. Hi, if you're new here. Uh, today, we are looking at Onyx and running through a quick start, basically, of uh, getting going, just building some basic stuff, a basic show in Onyx. Um, this isn't a full tutorial. We've got those all over the place. We've got, um, you know, our, our getting started with Onyx tutorials here. Uh, we've got Learn Stage Lighting Labs with Onyx for the Complete Newbie and Onyx Advanced Courses, which are just full courses that go over literally everything in Onyx, how to use it, all that stuff. Um, you can check all that out below, but this, this is just a really great quick start guide. And, and the goal of this video is to walk you through the basics of using Onyx so that you can kind of look at it and say, okay, is this a good software or hardware for me? And if it is, and you need some hardware and you're in the US, hey, we're Learn Stage Lighting Gear, learnstagelightinggear.com. We are your Onyx dealer, we are your Onyx experts, and we've got all this stuff, and we can help you determine the best fit for your need based on the output you need and the control surfaces you're looking for. Okay, so let's dive in. When you launch Onyx, once you install it, whether you're on a PC, on a console, it's all the same, you're gonna have this screen. Okay, and while you can stand here and get mesmerized and kind of meditate to this cool wavy animation, uh, what we're going to do is press new to start a new show. Uh, you also have the ability to load, to join network shows, and to continue a show if you've loaded a show on that system before. Okay, so you might not see continue if it's a brand new install, brand new console, what have you. Back over to new, yes. Give it a name. Press enter, or okay. And then it's going to start. It's going to take a minute. It's going to build your show here. Uh, while we do that, the first thing we're going to do, like a lot of lighting consoles, is something called patching. Patching is just selecting the lights that we've got in our lighting rig here today and, uh, and putting them into Onyx. And then Onyx, therefore, generates some DMX addresses. Now, I'm connected to a 3D visualizer called Capture, so that's what that little pop-up there was for. Uh, you probably won't get that. All right? So patching is pretty simple. We hit the menu, we go to patch, we go to command, new fixture, and the wizard pops up. Okay, now this has so many different brands, so many different fixtures. If you don't see your fixture, you can always request it and download the latest fixture library from support.obsidiancontrol.com. Not only are they nice over there, but they're incredibly quick with building these things. I mean, I've requested profiles from every major console and a lot of minor consoles. And to tell you the truth, a lot of brands, when you put in a fixture profile request, they're like, oh, it's going to be two weeks. It's going to be three months. It's going to be five years. You know, maybe that's a slight exaggeration. Um, but often they're really slow. These guys are not. Um, they strive to, to knock them out, I think they say, in three business days. Um, more often than not, I see it the next day or maybe a day later, like, like you know, in two days. So really awesome. The team is great. Um, and that's, and that's honestly one of the reasons why I recommend Onyx because you have to have that level of support to say, okay, if I need a fixture, if there's a new fixture that's not in Onyx and I need to use it in a couple di in a few days, how do I get it? Right. And having a team that's there, that's dedicated, that builds this stuff that's fast and accurate, just it's important. So all that to say, I'm going to go over here to our friends at Gamma LED Vision. We got a rig here with Borealis RCs in 14 channel mode, auto patch. So I just pressed, just selected my brand, fixture, mode. It shows me the channel so I can compare that to a manual if I happen to have one and I'm not sure you know, if it lines up correct. Then like we said, we hit auto patch. You can name them if you want. If not, they're just gonna have the type as the name. Set the amount here. So you can type the amount on a number pad, not the numbers on top of the keyboard, but a number pad on a keyboard. You can plus and minus. Both are legitimate ways to enter the number. Start ID, I like to personally set my washes to 301. Universe and address, I'm going to leave on automatic mode, so the console is just going to pick the first available address. Apply to patch. Then, commands, new fixture, we'll do it again. This time I'm doing some TX5s from ga Gamma. So we can ST, 
to get there nice and quick. 18 channel mode. I got six of those guys. I like my main spot to be at 101 is the starting ID. Auto, auto. Excellent. If you get this, this is a great pop-up to walk through. You'll see this from time to time. What this says basically is this channel in that fixture, the color index channel, is they basically, when they made the profiles, they didn't really have a good place to put this channel. They were Maybe they weren't sure exactly what it did in that specific light um, because, you know, they build these fast and ultimately it's not their job to scope out in depth every single light they build a profile for. Um, and, and categorize everything. So they're like, okay, we don't know where to categorize this, where to place it on the encoder wheels for programming. So if you see parameters in here, it's no big deal, but you do need to go ahead and you want to go ahead and move it over into one of the, the console's parameter groups. And the reason why you want to do this is because A, every time you start the show file, this pesky pop-up's gonna come up, <laughs> and B, you won't be able to get to the channel and actually use it until it's over here in a parameter group. So this one on this fixture, I happen to know is color index. What it is basically is that um, the color wheel, color one has all of these different colors on it. And it uses a, a, a non-continuous, but a, a snapping um, a mode basically. So as you go up the channel, it snaps between the colors. If you want to do split colors halfway between one color and another on this fixture, um, there's a second channel that takes from where the current color is and shifts it um, to be able to do split colors. So um, I'll put that in color, press apply, and now I'm good to go. You can change these later in, later in settings, no big deal. But for now, commands, new fixture. We're going to do, oh, what happened here? Oh my goodness, what's going on? So this is something that this software has always done. I've never been a huge fan of it, but you know what? It's whatever. Um, you can get used to it, right? Uh, and basically, once you've patched two fixture types in your show, it brings you to this pane at the bottom of this window, the patched types, which is just showing you the stuff you already have in the show, so you can select from that. But like normal, we could just go here to standard library, and then we're back back in the full fixture library, able to get stuff. That trips people up sometimes, though. It tripped me up at first, uh, back when I learned this software in this console. But Starburst 7 by 18 we're doing six channel. Uh, in this case, it's a six channel mode. It doesn't have a dimmer channel. It doesn't have an intensity. That doesn't mean we can't control it with intensity. We just gotta click on this virtual dimmer, okay? So anytime you've got an LED fixture, basically, that does not have an intensity channel in the profile, but you want to control intensity and, and you really do because not only does it let you hit like at full on the command keypad or, or at whatever to set an overall level, but it also makes it so that you can do effects on the intensity um, and you wouldn't be able to do that if you didn't turn on the virtual dimmer. So more often than not, if you see virtual dimmer, turn it on, but not always. For example, multi-cell pixel based fixtures, um, if you turn that on and there is a master channel, but not one for every cell, then you basically have to turn on the, the master or the main and then also all of the sub fixtures and that's too much work. So auto patch, in my opinion, we're doing eight of these guys. I'm going to put them at 401 apply. Cool. Now we're done patching. So we'll back out of here and now we're at a blank screen. What do we do? Okay, it's actually really quite simple. So the first thing we're gonna do is just go up here to our fixtures presets window and just check our patch real quick. So I'm gonna press highlight and make sure that all the lights come up when I click on them. In this case, these guys, let's see, why are they not coming up? We're highlighting them, um, colors up. But for some reason we're having Maybe something strobe channel. Strobe channel might be wrong. We've definitely got a mismatch between our visualizer and our fixtures themselves. Not a huge issue. We'll figure it out. Actually, I don't know why. Who knows why? Um, we clearly have a little bit of a uh, disagreement here between, <laughs> between our visualizer and our fixtures themselves. I'm not going to stress about it right now. I may have patched it wrong. Regardless, um, you know, we've got, let's see, do we have our pars? Yeah, we got our pars. So we got our pars. We've got our, our main uh, movers. 
I'm not sure why the washes aren't coming up, but regardless, we could still teach you how to program. So you get to turn highlight off, go ahead and start building. So in Onyx, just like a lot of these other lighting consoles that we work with, um, you want to take the fixtures and the first thing you want to do is, you know, say bring it to full or you can go on your command keypad and I'm actually going to pull up this whole virtual console here. And you want to build presets or palettes as a lot of consoles call them. And then you want to build those into queues. And the reason why you do that is because it enables you to, uh, update things later. It also speeds up the programming of your cues once you've done that initial setup. So to program a preset, just as simple as hitting record, tapping the preset number. Now you'll notice here, the presets are organized by parameter type automatically and they'll filter. So if I had moved the lights and set an intensity, when I record this here in the top, I see an I. All I have is intensity. It is overridable, um, but most of the time you don't want to do that. Then once it's recorded, just type. So at full. Now, presets work like this. Whether you select all the lights and select the presets, or if we clear twice, clear out our programmer and select just one or two of the lights and press the preset, only the lights that you selected uh, get brought up. Therefore, sorry, I scrolled down. Therefore, you want to record like for an at full preset or if we go to color, for example, and say we go and we turn these all red, okay? All the fixtures are now red. I'll just bring them up so you can see them. I would want to go and record all of my fixtures into the red preset because there's no need for you to have a red preset for each type of fixture most often. Occasionally, I do if a light has color mixing and fixed colors, I like to separate those um, so that I have a color mix version and a fixed color, like a CMY version and a, a color wheel version. Um, but other than that, you know, when you have a preset for a given position, intensity, a color, etc., just put all of the fixtures into a single preset because they're filtered by what you select first. And so there's, you're gonna end up, if you don't do that, with a mess of a lot of presets, you're trying to remember which one each fixture's in, and, and it all ultimately just causes more work and confusion. Okay, so we'll go ahead and record a quick red preset. Clear twice to clear out our programmer. Okay, and now we're ready to build our first queue. So that's really as simple as same thing, select lights either individually here. We could hit record and build a group real quick. Um, and again, just typing after I hit record or after I click on it to fix it. Um, there's also automatic groups. That's just the patched types of fixtures um, as well. And you know, then we're gonna select attributes like turn it on at full. If we had a pan tilt preset, we could select it, and then we can go ahead and record that to a queue list. Sure, we'll call it red TX5. There's different types of queue lists, um, but we're not gonna get into that now, etc. cetera. Um, because as you can see here, um, Onyx is a professional level console. There's definitely a lot here that you can get into. There's a lot of different windows um, a lot of different things that you can work with. There's the pixel mapper that's built into it that's incredible called Dylos. Um, but what we want to do in this tutorial basically is just really just cover those basic things. Um, really just show you, you know, that we record this basic cue and we play it back and we get it, right? And we can bring up that fader, hit the play button, and we'll get exactly this. And we can move that fader up and down, excuse me and control the intensity, right? That's that's kind of what we're looking at right now. Um, let's talk about effects really quick. Onyx has a pretty typical effects engine besides the pixel mapper, which we're not covering here today, where you simply select lights, um, typically in groups, go to the parameter, like here we'll just go to the intensity, and then go over to effects. Now we have swing, the amount that it moves off of its base point, speed, how fast it does that, mode, how it does it, the shape it follows, and then multiplier, which is just a speed multiplier. If you want to go real fast, you can. 
Then we go to effects timing. Most often I choose wave and this sets our offset. Six spreads it, it says six there, amount six, and it gives us that six because we have six fixtures. Um, and so when we, when we select the wave that's equal to the amount of fixtures we have selected, then you simply go ahead and that effect is now stretched across those fixtures. Okay, nice and simple. So if I go and I set that to three, we see here, boom, it's mirrored, you know, it's, it's well, it's not mirrored, it's based on the patch, but it's, it's happening on both sides, right? Um, and then these effects can be recorded, you know, say we record that into a second queue, we can clear, and when we go to that second queue, the effect plays. Okay, um, so pretty simple. There's a lot more depth you can get into, including with the pixel mapper dialos, but uh, we're not getting into that here. What I wanted to do with today's tutorial is basically equip you to show you like the very basics, quick, basic level. Like we did this in 15 minutes. Hello, um, as to how you could get started at Onyx and how you can start to determine, okay, does this seem like it could be a fit for me? Like based on how quickly David got into this and, and worked with things, does this seem like a good program for me or not? Um, if you you know are considering Onyx and you're looking at hardware, we're here for you at Learn Stage Lighting Gear, learnstagelightinggear.com. We've got all the Onyx stuff and we would love to help you get it or uh, help you basically by asking you a couple questions, uh, figure out what console is right for you. We have options in every range uh, as we've always done here on the channel. And we make our recommendations based off of looking at your needs, um, both financial and uh, more importantly, uh, the needs of, okay, who needs to program it? How easy does it need to be to program? How much time do you have? What's your experience like? Um, what kind of external triggering do you need to do? Things like that. We look at all that, we make our recommendations. So that sounds good to you and you're considering Onyx, hop over there, let us know. We love to help people and uh, we hope you have a great day and check out our, the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. See ya.